So hello, everybody. Welcome in. We are now hopefully live in the five day EKG challenge. And again, we're one minute till go time. So we're just getting all prepped and ready for you guys. But happy Thursday. We made it. You guys made it all week so long. And I'm just super hashtag impressed at your dedication, your focus, your commitment to learning EKGs. It says volumes about you, that you guys are here on your time off, putting in the work to get better to save your patients. And I say hats off to you. Um, I will warn you, um, I have a little eustachium tube dysfunction going on today. So I am on some Claritin D. So I have lots of energy tonight, you guys. I will warn you and I apologize. Um, but I did some painting today. Oh my gosh, guys, did some painting. So why am I showing you this? I'm not showing you this to brag. I'm showing you this because tomorrow night, this is one of the prizes. Oh my gosh. Does this, does the fun ever end? Um, speaking of prizes, um, we have a special guest tonight coming on after me. And uh, Joe Hyrone, I think I'm saying your name right. I hope I am. He is an EP extraordinaire who will be coming on and doing a basic arrhythmia bonus for us tonight. So if you guys want to learn basic arrhythmias, and I know a lot of you do. When a lot of you came into our group, you were like, yes, show me the arrhythmias. And we were like, okay, we're going to give you two arrhythmia bonuses on top of our 12 lead basics, right? So this is just a total EKG party. And we are, again, glad you're here. So if you're on with us in Facebook, put hashtag live or hashtag replay, because if you say hashtag replay, I do say hi to you. Um, I'd love to know who's actually getting to watch the sessions and who's not. Um, and a lot of times we have repeat customers, which I love. Dominique. Hey, Dominique, I just tagged you in the heart block video. Hopefully um, you saw that. And Michelle, somebody's in the business page asking for today's link. I'm not sure if you can send that to her. And Debbie, loving that you're here with us live as well. And Natalie's here. Thank you for <laughs> hashtag live. What's up, you guys? So, um, a couple things tonight is not only hi Joyce Walcott not only do we have a free uh, scholarship giveaway this this tonight we're going to be doing it on hi Anne we're going to be doing it on the special session with Joe so we're going to log off of our session and then come back in for Joe's session at 6 15 so in about 45 minutes from now and on his session we're going to be doing the giveaway so I'll be telling you later on his session what the hashtag is if you want it be in it to win it for the scholarship. I'll tell you at the end of this talk tonight what you actually get in the scholarship for 30 days with us. Um, it's a pretty uh, extensive package that you get. And we do this as a giving back, right, to our community, just like this five day challenge. So let's talk about uh, the workbook because if any of you still have joined us today, I know there was at least six of you who just joined our group today, you may still need the workbook. We have Tori, our concierge, who's in the group with us who can get you your workbook. And this is actually the answer sheet to last night where we did, we covered brugadas. Just to recap, this is what I was hoping you would write down. Okay, I was hoping you would write down that we look for a right bundle branch block, a family history of sudden death, ST elevation that looks like ski slopes. And again, asking if there's, you know, any family history, somebody died young, cardiac arrest, no trauma. Hey, Marsoud, how are you doing? So again, this is just, somebody said, what, there's a workbook? It's not really a workbook. It's sort of like a, a practice. We give you the actual EKGs. So you can like get up close and personal. And if you have bad vision like me, uh, and, or you could draw on it if you wanted to. But basically there's actually science that says, if you write something down, you retain it better 25%. So that's a big um, reason why we did this because we wanted those people who are like, you know, learners that write, we wanted you to have a way to cement the knowledge. So going back to the theme of today and yesterday, we, we were talking a lot about sports physicals. Now, I don't know how many of you do sports physicals, but put hashtag sports physicals if you do them, because I got to tell you guys something. So that was the biggest reason I left primary care after three months of being in primary care. Three months is all I could do because of the sports physicals. I got to tell you that these are very high risk. I mean, you think working in the ER um, is high risk. No, no. Working primary, doing sports 
physicals, I think is super high risk. You have, let's just paint the scenario for you here on what you normally see. I'm going to tell you how much I feel your pain. <laughs> Kelly says she used to do sports physicals, hated them. I totally agree. Okay, so here's the thing. Parent comes in with child, said child, who's probably around 15 or 16. Said child looks great, has positive text sign. We talked about that, right? And <clears throat> they're like, hey, can you just sign the form? We got to go. Can you just sign the form? And, you know, there's just rush to get these patients out. But you have to ask the questions. You have to do a good exam. And you have to listen for murmurs, hint, hint, tonight. And you have to think about an EKG if they have priority chief complaints. So that would be like, you know, any of these things on here. And when you have a syncopal patient, this is a list of not all the things, but some of the high risk things that you want to look for. And this was an example of in V1 and V2, the thing we covered last night, Brugadas, which is a channelopathy, which is found in you know, mostly young people who syncopize because, right, we're not really getting screening EKGs on kids. It's not cost effective per the guidelines. We don't do routine screening. But I digress. If you have priority symptoms on somebody or a murmur, get an EKG. It's definitely justified. So let's talk about our case today. Now, remember, I put a video every morning, a little video snack at eight o'clock in the morning. And let all the people that commented this morning were again, spot on. They totally, uh, Jessica was like, nailed it down completely. So Jessica, swing in if you're watching, you, you did so great. Um, I do shout you out if you get the answers right. So you do want to guess on those eight o'clock cases if you have time, because getting to some props for me, right? Like that's kind of cool. So anyway, <clears throat> going back over here, let's talk about this case. And Tori says, by the way, um, if you still need your workbook, let her know, she'll get it to you. And welcome in Martine for joining us. So let's talk about this case. This was a young patient who had syncope. And the ER, actually, the patient went to the ER. They got a workup, and the ER workup was fairly normal. They had a normal CBC, CMP. Uh, I don't even, I don't know if a trope was done or not, but in a young person, well, maybe they thought about myocarditis, maybe they didn't. Okay. So um, they did a chest x ray, it was normal. They, they heard his history that he was running and it was hot and he, you know, kind of, fell out basically is how people say it in the South, he fell out. And so he got to the emergency room, he felt better after a liter of fluid because who doesn't feel better after a liter of fluid? We're all walking around dehydrated, especially if you're a running teenager. So anyway, they do his EKG and they're like, oh, is old anterol, uh, anterolateral MI or old lateral MI? And they're like, no, it's not an MI, he's young. And they discharge him. The next day he goes home and he is mowing the lawn because it's a Sunday and that's how he earns his allowance and he goes into cardiac arrest. What was missed, right? What was missed? So this was missed. This is a zebra and I'm wearing my zebra shirt for you guys tonight. You can see I have brigadas on here and I have a zebra because this is to remind you to always be zebra hunters. Remember how we talked about last night when you hear hoofbeats, don't think horses, because you're always gonna see the horses. Look for the zebras so that you don't get burned. Now this finding is one of two ways that this thing will present, okay? Finding one is it will present like this with Q waves, and finding two is it'll present with inverted symmetric T waves where they shouldn't be inverted, okay? So um, Michelle made this for us, she said, hey, look for the zebra in lead one, AVL, V5, and V6. So these are Q waves. And I know that I was taught, and tell me if you were, if you were the same, were you guys taught that Q waves, they're old MI, they're old MI. Remember, they're the first negative deflection after the P waves. You can see Q here and Q here. There's a Q wave in lead one, AVL, V5, and V6, where the zebras are. And there's a little increased voltage right here, V2 and V3, which is, you know, kind of around the septum, you're seeing a little extra voltage in the septum, that's kind of a clue. So if you see these skinny dagger narrow cues in one AVL, V5 and V6, we need to think about the diagnosis of hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. Now, what's the story with this hokum and what is it? Well, it's basically a thickening of the ventricle. You can see here, this ventricle is super thick, and here in the normal heart, it's not thick, okay? It's just 
beautiful and wonderful and a little bit thicker than the right ventricle because the left ventricle does more work. So of course it would be a little thicker. And you can see that this whole ventricle is thickened, okay? And this actually creates an outflow tract obstruction a lot of the times where when you're exercising, it's a supply versus demand mismatch where your heart's, your body's like, give me all that blood and your heart's pumping, but it's not able to fill appropriately because the, the wall is very stiff and there's, it's thickened and the, it also creates sometimes a mitral regurgitation murmur. So you can hear the murmur of just the, the septal wall being thick, or you can actually hear a mitral regurg murmur. So if you hear an S3, an S4, or a mitral regurg murmur, those are ones in a, in a you know, team, especially with a syncopal history, do not let that patient go home. Do not pass, go or collect 200, right? Do the consult in the hospital if they're there at the hospital or get them to the hospital. Because this is a hot potato finding. It's a high risk and we don't wanna let them go. But here's my question for you. What is, what is the time in the patient's life that you think that they get diagnosed? When do you think a patient gets diagnosed with hokum? Is it when they're little, in utero, um, later in life? When are they usually diagnosed? Anybody have any guesses? Because this is kind of a fun, fun little thing. Um, as an athlete or on a sports physical, we hope that's the case, you guys. We hope. Um, if it was diagnosed later in life, that would be surprising because patients don't usually make it that long because they usually go into cardiac arrest. So Megan Martin, hats off to you, my friend. Um, you actually guessed correctly. And that was sort of a trick question, but it's true. It's normally diagnosed on autopsy, right? Too late. So it's up to us as the zebra hunters, and we hope Heidi, it's caught in adolescence, but it's up to us, the zebra hunters, to listen to that heart really carefully and do an EKG, a screening EKG, and look for the skinny narrow dagger cues of hokum. Now, here's the thing. Okay, I mentioned it could cause an S3, an S4, or a mitral regurg murmur, because again, things aren't lining up well, so the mitral leaflets do not line up well, and that can cause some regurg. And if you remember, an S3 is a, a boggy wall, and an S4 is a stiff wall. I heard an S4 for the first time in like a long time yesterday, and it was in someone I didn't expect. It was a 39-year-old who has hypertension. We don't, well, he probably has sleep apnea. We're still working him up, but oh my gosh. I heard an S4 and I just, I had to contain my excitement because yes, I'm that girl. Yes. Hashtag nerd. I am that girl who loves um, really rare things. So this, the S4 is a sign of a stiff wall and the murmur sounds like a stiff wall, a stiff wall, a stiff wall. So when I heard it, I was like, okay, extra sound check. Second thing, where is it? Is it sound more like Tennessee, Tennessee, or Astifal, Astifal? And I was like, oh, sounds more like Astifal. And if you're wondering about heart murmurs, we actually do a uh, heart murmur lecture in the 30 day EKG challenge, PS. Um, but any chief complaints, right, that are priority, you wanna get that EKG. But let's talk a little bit more really quickly about Q waves, because again, I just wanted to show you that they are deep, they are big, big and deep and skinny, big, deep, skinny big, deep, skinny, right? So they are in comparison to the MIQ is, which are a little wider. So just know that if you have a young patient, especially if they're athletic and syncopal during exercise or palpitations or orthopnea, just get the EKG. And honestly, if any of you do sports physicals, then it doesn't sound like any of you do, but if you do and you really wanted to get an EKG, when you do your review of systems, if they have a positive review of systems for dyspnea on exertion, which pretty much when anybody's running their short of breath, if you really push them, right, you can get an EKG. So just little little things to tuck away in your bag of tricks. So this is the, the nut, um, nuts and bolts theory, okay? And this is the little nugget I wanted to get to. So um, this Q wave here is skinny and deep, and this one is wide, okay? So skinny, deep, wide, skinny, deep, wide. And the way I remember it is, the hokum is sort of like a champagne flute and the Q wave that's associated with an MI is more like a wine glass. And the way I remember the difference is which Q wave would I rather have as my wine glass? Well, clearly I want the MI Q wave because it's gonna hold more wine. And the way I remember that is that 
if you drink a glass of wine a day, it keeps the doctor and pee or PA away. Is that really true? One they say is okay. I don't even I don't even think that that's recommended. But basically, that's how I remember it in my um, crazy crazy little uh, way of thinking about it. But it sticks. Oh, also yes, thank you Tori for reminding me. Tori, you're amazing. Hashtag love Tori. Um, Tori does have a little checklist I made that she'll send you in your messenger if you ask her. Hi, Julia, welcome in. Um, yeah, Tori will send you a sports physical checklist and it's really, really um, a good little thing to have handy. Talks about things you should ask and things you should look for. Oh, love you. Oh. Um, and then Michelle says, as long as it's not energy drinks. Can you imagine, Michelle, if I had an energy drink on top of the Sudafed, I would go into AFib or have palpitations. So here is the other nugget I wanted to leave you with as far as exam, okay? So a murmur that softens with squatting. Oh, good question. Hold on. Brenda asked a good question. How many boxes deep? So there isn't a box criteria. Isn't that interesting? So there is actually a, a measurement that's specific for MI. It's a quarter to a third the height of the R wave. But for Hokum, you don't have a measurement requirement. You're just looking for them in the one AVL V5 and V6, one AVL V5 and V6, and that's where you're looking for them. Okay. And also, <clears throat> you're going to listen to their heart for a murmur. And um, this is actually my husband, John, he's an artist. And he drew this uh, artist's rendition of me actually doing a physical exam in clinic. You can see I have a little zebra on my, my shoe. Um, that's how you know he drew a drawing. Super cute, right? And so he, he's drawing me listening to an, a sports physical person's heart and having them squat. So that's the way you remember it is you're squatting to make the murmur softer. Squatting makes it softer, okay? Standing makes it louder, squatting makes it softer. Standing louder, squatter softer. And that's how I remember it. And the other thing he drew on, on this little drawing, which I think is super cute, um, is, there, uh, is that there is a two and two on his shirt. So the two and two, if you remember night one, we had that EKG with all ST elevation and no reciprocal depression, that was a pericarditis. So this, this shirt, this t-shirt's reminding you you need to have two up and two down for semi-criteria. So I thought that was cute. Okay, Dominique asked a question. I love your name, by the way, Dominique. That's my favorite island. Um, is there a name clinical correlation for the slurring at the end of the QRS? Nope, no, no name that I'm aware of. Um, nope, but good, good question. There is a name for slurring at the beginning of a delta wave, um, the beginning of a QRS, and that's the delta wave. So yeah. But good question. So let's just refresh really quick what the myocardium is doing. It's getting thick, it's hypertrophic, and there's an outflow tract usually obstructing the blood flow out, and it's a supply versus demand issue. And we notice it on exam with a murmur, and we notice it on the EKG with those Q waves or symmetric inverted Ts. So what's the test of choice? Well, honestly, chest x-ray is not going to be super helpful. Chest x-ray would be helpful if you saw like a water bottle heart. Um, if you were looking for like a tamponade or a pericardial effusion potentially, that's very big, but not really in hokum. A um, echo would be the way to go. An echo would be the way to go. And you look for the measurement and you look for the obstructed pathway. And they'll sometimes see this on cath as well. Okay, so um, for our case that we had, he was diagnosed with hokum. So um, hokum, again, is a thickening and it leads to arrhythmias that are lethal, BTAC and BFib, that patients, if they exercise, they are more at risk. So oftentimes we use beta blockers, but there's really no way to get around having to put an ICD in to prevent sudden death. There's a great case that circulated about seven years ago. Um, uh, I don't have it up, I, guess, I thought I did. About seven years ago where there was a 17 year old who actually um, was on, he was doing this like news show on YouTube and his name was Ben Breedlove. And if you wanna watch the video, I usually play it. I'm not playing it tonight because everything else is so sad in the world. I don't wanna play it and make you guys sad. But it's, if you wanna watch it, he's like the face of Hokum. Because here's the thing. I know we talk about these high risk zebra findings in this challenge, and maybe you won't see a brigada and maybe you won't see a hokum. But the thing is, is this. Sometimes if you have a face for a disease process, you care about it a little more. And 
you know, he talks about, he tells his story of having hokum and how he was not allowed to exercise because exercise is contraindicated. And he talked about how he had to find other things that were exciting. And he actually had four cardiac arrests and they finally put an ICD in, I think when he was like 11 or something. And he talks about, you know, what it was like to, you know, temporarily be in cardiac arrest and all the things associated with that. So it's a really cool video if you want to watch it. He ultimately died. It's like, I think a day or two after Christmas, um, around his 18th birthday, I believe. But um, at the end of the day, you know, if you're thinking to yourself, well, why should I spend any time on this? Well, first of all, it's because if you don't catch it and somebody dies, they're going to be in the paper, but so are you. And you're going to be the person that was the last provider to see that patient. You missed it. And the lawyer who is in court with you, who puts your chart up on the wall and says, and you say, well, you know, that's so rare. I don't have to know that because it's rare. No, you actually do. Right. So at the end of the day, we have to know the high risk things. And that's what we teach you in our 30 day challenge. So you really want to win this scholarship that we're going to give away tonight. So um, the high risk findings are literally what we do. And so just to backtrack to tell you really quickly what, what prompted this. So um, I remember struggling learning EKGs too. And I remember when I was working in the ER, I felt like I was drowning. So I asked to go to a high risk emergency medicine conference. And that was where I first learned about some of these things that no one else was teaching. Hokum, Borgata, um, Wellens warning, D Winters T waves, hyperacute T waves, posterior MI, um, two to one atrial flutter. These are all high risk things. And what to look for when it says non-specific ST T wave changes, that the machine won't pick up. And I got scared, you guys. So I sat down and I was like, okay, I'm making a list because I'm not going back to work until I write this list. And I know the, the patterns of these things. And I started memorizing those patterns because I knew I could miss a small Q wave right in lead three. I knew I could miss a flip T wave and no one's gonna die. I knew I could miss LVH, no one's gonna die. I knew I could miss axis, no one's gonna die, but you could die if you miss these other things. So why the heck does Dubins, sorry to throw you under the bus Dubins, I'm gonna go there, I'm just feeling it tonight. Why do you start with axis? That literally almost made me walk away from medicine. And you can see that would have been a tragedy right? Because I wouldn't be serving you. I wouldn't be serving our patients. And that would be a shame. So long story short, we take the high risk things, we throw them into this 30 day challenge and we get you comfortable with the high risk things because that way you don't get sued. That way your patients live another day, right? And everybody's happy. And we don't spend a lot of time on the fluff because it's not important. Now, now, if you want to win the scholarship, we're going to be giving it away on Joe's session. He's going to be coming on in about 15 minutes. Um, yes, Actus Invec, right? Joe agrees. So Joe is an EPRN master, okay? And he also says Actus, Axis and Vectors are hard to learn out of the gate. And to be honest with you, I don't use Axis or Vector in my everyday clinical medicine very often, okay? So it is important to spend your very limited time because we know right? If you have limited time, you want to spend it where it matters. And the high risk EKG findings that the machine will miss are the places. So if you want to win, we're going to give you a hashtag to put in, in Joe's lecture. So you have to come back on Joe's Zoom, which we'll make sure we post. And you come into that Zoom with us or on Facebook, and we'll give you a hashtag to put in if you want to be entered for the scholarship. And I will be drawing it live while Joe is on at the end of his session. I will be drawing it and we will announce our winner. Okay. So you have to where is it being posted? Um, it's actually every Zoom, you guys, is in the event. So you go in the Facebook group, go into events, and it's right there. But Michelle, are you able to post it? Or Tori, can you just post it in this chat so people have it so they can make sure to get on it? That would be amazing. And also, this is just in the first two weeks. Week one and week two are so jam-packed. I know, because guys, here's the thing. We get you hopped up on EKGs in the five day EKG challenge. And our whole goal is for you to be like, yes, I can do this. I can do this. It's actually, thank you for posting it in the Zoom too. Thank you. I can do this and I can get some momentum and we keep that momentum going. Yes, we take the holiday weekend off, right? We come back on July 7th and we jump in with a welcome call, right? We show you around the group, we get your boxes mailed to you. Then that weekend, 
we spend time on arrhythmias and EKG terminology. And then we jump in the next week to EKG 102, right? So we have EKG 101, which is the basics, then EKG 102. And we have also some bonus study halls that this is just the first two weeks. So literally, if you just showed up for the first two weeks, you'd be super confident already in just what we teach you in the first two weeks. And I think there's actually one more event that didn't make it on here, but Michelle's, um, Michelle's thing was just too packed, I think. Michelle does a, a basic 12 lead on Friday, and I'll show you the schedule, but that's, that's amazing. She's very visual and she makes things fun and she gives you workbooks too. So that's also awesome. So in EKG 101, we basically take you from baby you know, just crawling. We talk about the waves, how to measure, the arrhythmias, a little bit on conduction. That's the first um, EKG 101 session. And then on 102, we go into what artery feeds which wall, how to use the intervals, contiguous reciprocal changes, that's July 14th. So as you can see, it's Thursdays. And then we also have EKG 103, where we focus on ACS. So that's when we cover all these juicy things. Um, that is, is, you know, just like D winters. I talked about that. Wellens, posterior, hyperacute T waves, all these things you should know. And of course, how to recognize STEMI. So Kelly asked a good question. Is it the same way with the Zoom? And you can watch later if you're working. Yes, this five day is like what we do in the 30 day. We model it exactly the same. We kind of sort of train you in the five day where to look for things, how we do things. So by the time you're in the 30 day, you just hit the ground running. Of course, we show you on the welcome call, but you already know our style, right? You know where to find the Zooms. You know that we're going to record stuff and it, where it's going to go because we put it all in the guide section, just like we do here, which is so fun. And then here's the actual schedule. And I'll post this tonight so you guys can see it. For whoever doesn't win the scholarship, you guys can see when we meet. Um, yeah, Kelly, you do get CME credit, actually. That's a good question. Um, so whether you're a scholarship winner or you join us in the paid membership, either way, you get CE, right? And you can get, um, it's going to be 12 hours of Category 1 CE. So all you have to do is watch, there's 12 sessions that you have to watch, uh, 12 hours of things, basically. And that's it. And then you can fill out your link and get your CE. But basically, here it is just lined up for you. So the goal is that the first two weeks, we're showing you all the basics and then we're jumping in with Michelle and then practicing those basics. So Michelle on Friday the 15th, she's doing a basic 12 lead and then she's practicing with you the next two Mondays. So you get to take the 10 step and practice it with her. And then we, we do Gary, he comes back. If you saw Gary, he comes back and he's doing a 12 lead version of what he did for us on the 21st. And then we have something called study hall, where is if you have questions for David, the EKG master who hasn't shown up yet in this challenge, I think he's working, but he's in our 30 day. He's like the guy who will, um, if you send in an EKG, he'll put it in his PowerPoint all broken down for you. Or if you have EKG questions that are really hard, he'll answer them. He's like the guru of our universe. So that's the schedule. You're going to get access to all of this. But of course, if you're working, it's recorded, so no worries. And then <clears throat> you're gonna get access for Mondays to the EKG Launchpad group. And then scholarship winner, you're gonna get access to the, it's now a July 30 day group. And you're also gonna get this little kit sent to you. So I'm gonna mail out a kit like this. Actually, um, we already have them made. They come with your workbook that we're gonna go over in the workshop. They actually come with a little beautiful painting, handmade. We got, I actually give you an EKG, let me show you this. And scholarship winner, this is coming to you, right? So you're going to get this EKG that we're going to take crayons and color code the contiguous leads reciprocal changes. And you also get some cheat sheets, which I can't show you, otherwise I would give my secrets away. But we're also giving an RCAT window to you so that you can take this to clinic and measure your intervals and your straight lines. Okay, so that's what's coming to you, scholarship winner. And if you want to join us and you're not a winner, of course, you can still do that too. We'll give the info on that. But then we're going to do at the end of the month study hall where you can say, Jen, I want to cover this. I want to cover that. And we break it down for you. But essentially, I go through differentials with you. We talk about how to you know, talk to our collaborating docs, how to choose tests for certain chief complaints. In fact, we just did that right before I hopped on. We did a study hall on the 30 day for our last 30 day challenge. We just wrapped that up today. So that was really fun. And um, yeah, so that's it in a nutshell. So um, we're going to be meeting back at 6.15 tonight. Um, I know that Tori and Michelle have been posting link. 
I will post it again as well in the main feed for us to hop back on in 15 minutes. So go get some popcorn, get a snack, um, whatever you want, some sort of beverage and meet us back for the Arrhythmia show that's about to come on. And of course, if you don't win the scholarship, Tori's posting the link so you can join us. And just to tell you really quick, um, a little bit on that, if you're interested, I'll be covering a little bit more tomorrow night at the end of our session for those who wanna stay. And I'll be covering um, a little bonus session probably next week as well, looking inside the group. But at the end of the day, you can get in for as low as $127 for six months access. So you not only get access to the first 30 days, right? Where we get you super comfortable, you get the kit, but we also we also actually give you six months access because you get access to everything we've done in the past two years, the recordings of those. And uh, somebody just messaged me that's in our, they've been in for a month and they said, how do I stay in longer? I already know I wanna watch all the recordings. So it's a great sm super smoking deal because you get a hybrid, type of EKG class. So you get live, you get recorded, and you get, you know, live people to answer your questions that are in the field doing the work. We're not just sitting around eating bonbons all day. We're actually also working. So we know how tired you are, right? So it's really, really super cool. We're excited. And uh, we've been doing this for about two years now. And the great thing is we have, um, it's a very, very wonderful, welcoming community where even if you're new there, nobody looks down on you. That's the one thing I'm, I'm like the most proud of about our five day group too, is that we are all in this together and we just kind of want to see you win. That's it at the end of the day. That's why we do this on, you know, days after work, right? But um, cool. So I think that's it. If you have questions, let us know. And um, we'll be jumping on in about, like I said, now 14 minutes back with Joe's session. And he's pretty amazing. Um, so you definitely don't want to miss that. And it will be recorded if you guys are on the East Coast and you have to get up early for bed. We don't hold that against you. Um, by all means, go to bed, right? And know that um, we have, if you've missed any sessions, we have a replay link that I can give you as well. So if you're at work and you want to watch the replay sessions, you don't have to watch them in Facebook. So we designed this to make this as user-friendly for you as possible. And um, yes, Joe says, except for Regina, she has to stay up. I know she's on the East Coast. Um, can you get the link for Joe? Heather says, I clicked out and it is now not here. Yes, let's, can we post the link one more time? It looks like it's up higher in the feed, Heather. Um, Tori, maybe you could post it again, Tori, one more time. Um, and I'll post it in the main Facebook group, but you guys are gonna love it. Your feed is all gone. Okay, that's that, oh, when you log out, it does go away. That's right, that's right. Um, Anyway, we'll get that link to you uh, one way or another, Heather, and um, hope to see you guys all very soon. I'm going to hop off and get on with Joe so we can get all set up for you guys for the main show. And I think if you, let me just make sure I can go like that. And I think I might be able to copy. And I think if I paste Heather, maybe you can copy and paste that. That's the Zoom. But also know guys that all the Zooms are going to be in the, uh, event section. So Julia says, will there be another hashtag for the scholarship? There will. I am not giving it to you until we hop on Joe's session because I want you to be live because um, I like to reward action takers. Speaking of that, I forgot to tell you the most important part. So if you do not win the scholarship, if you do not win the scholarship, but you want to join us, I'm doing a fast action bonus tonight. I think if you've been around, you kind of know that I like to reward people who run towards me, I run back to you. I'm gonna be giving the first five people who sign up tonight after the scholarship, if you don't win, who sign up for our 30 day challenge, you're going to also get this bonus workbook that Gary showed us two days ago with a little RCAP badge. This is $40 actually. If you can go to Amazon right now and buy it for $40 if you want to, but the first five people who join our 30 day challenge tonight, the first five people are gonna get that included. So fast action bonuses, we want you to join us. Um, so, you know, obviously come on, see if you win the scholarship. If you don't, then we'll see you in the group anyway, cause you'll hopefully join us for this awesome July session. Okay, so see you back in a few minutes and thank you Tori and Michelle for being my wing persons and I'll see you soon. Okay, 